Hey everyone, this is Scott from startmedia.com and in this video I'll be covering Anti-Spam B. For those of you who aren't aware, Anti-Spam B is a free anti-spam plugin on the WordPress.org repository. It's meant to help reduce comment spam, which is a serious issue on almost every WordPress website. It's an alternative to something like Akismet from Automatic or just using a simple CAPTCHA. So Akismet allows you to set a variety of rules to help reduce the amount of spam that gets to your notification center and your backend. So I'm gonna go through each of its settings and I'm gonna give you some recommended thoughts and opinions for this plugin. So the first thing is trusted approved commenters. If you have already accepted somebody's comments, then you can pretty much trust them. And this works by checking their email address and saying, okay, you've approved, say two of their comments, they're trusted, you don't need to review them. You should enable this option. One thing you can do is check if the commenter has a Gravatar image. Typically what happens is users who are spamming your website, they just use the default Gravatar at the time, which is normally just a blank mystery face. It's just a blank outline of a person and there is nothing unique there. So typically if you wanna allow users to comment as quickly as they can without needing to manually review them, Trusting commenters who have gravitars is a good means of doing it. Most spam that I see, they don't bother to have a gravitar. So I do recommend that you use this. And as it notes, it says, please note that this privacy, the, the privacy notice for this option, because it does have to go out and do a check against the user's gravitar image. But that's something to keep in mind. One thing you can do is consider the comment time, which will help the anti-spam be filter it based on the time of submission. If you're using any sort of page caching, and you should be, you shouldn't use this option. This is useful if the users are able to log into your website, but outside of that, I wouldn't really recommend this. Um, one thing you can do is BB code is spam. One of the most common things that spammers will do is they attempt to use BB code, which is basically just a type of form, it's common in forums, it allows them to mark up links to try and treat them as if they're actual URLs that are being linked to, to try and make their messages seem more interesting. And since the comments section doesn't support that, if anybody tries to add BB code in the links, you automatically can assume that they're going to be spamming you. So this option should definitely be checked. Validate the IP address of commenters. What this will do is it'll try to validate the IP to make sure that it's non-spam. It's a, it's a useful bit of functionality. This should be checked. Use a regular expression. This will allow uh, custom patterns by the plugin hook. You can enable or disable this. It doesn't really matter for most use cases. Then you can look in the local spam database, check for spam data on your own blog. So what this will do is your blog already has a good chunk of spam data. When you mark a comment as spam, the plugin can understand, that, okay, this comment was marked as spam and it came from this IP address because you did so locally. So the plugin can then assume that this IP address is known to cause spam and then use that for gauging and blocking future comments. And then one thing you can enable is block or allow comments from specific countries. Typically, if you're a local business in the United States, you don't need to be getting comments from the UK. Mo most of the time, your clients are never gonna be in the UK. So you don't need to worry about them. You don't need them commenting on your website. You could typically assume that those outside of the market or region that you're trying to advertise in are truly there just to try and get a backlink and trying to promote their, their spam business or whatever they're trying to do. So if you're going to do this, you have to make sure that you're blocking comments in regions that you're not going to be in, and then you have to go out and black and uh, blacklist it by the ISO codes. You can also whitelist them below if you'd like to make sure that your country of origin is whitelisted. I'm not going to do this for the sake of this video, but you, the documentation and the links to the ISO codes are included in the description. You can also allow comments to only be sent in certain languages. This is another good means, but it's also pretty difficult to detect sometimes. So, but more or less, if the comment is in English, you and your website is in English, you normally only need comments that are coming in as English. And it's only able to detect a few languages, German, French, Italian, Spanish, and English. If you're outside of those languages, it cannot help you, sadly. But if you have an English, if you're running a small business blog, for instance, and you want to block out spam, and your entire user base is 
typically going to speak English, you don't need to have somebody speaking German in your comment section, so you can block list, blacklist the comments. And then under the advanced section, there's additional functionality that it's kind of advanced, but it's not really, and we're going to explain why. So you can mark as spam, but do not delete. So what this will do is it will force any comment that is flagged to go into your spam folder instead of being deleted on spot. The reason that you would want this is because the plugin may sometimes false, it may false flag someone as spam, and thus their comment would end up being deleted and you would never know, be notified or be able to rectify the situation. Typically, I recommend that when you're detecting spam comments, you do put it in the spam folder. That way you can correct any errors that are naturally going to appear when using a plugin such as this. You didn't have the ability to notify admins by email about incoming spam. I wouldn't do this because it's quite annoying. It, I, I don't need unnecessary notifications if something's being flagged as spam. It would be great if it notified you if spam was on the site, but it was published. That would be a good indication, but that's not what this does. Do not spam, do not save the spam reason. So if you're for some reason having a comment marked as spam, but you don't want to know the reason for the reason that it was flagged as spam, then you can uncheck this. I would not recommend doing that. The reason for this is if you don't save the spam reason, you'll have no reason to understand why it was blocked so you can't resolve the issue. Let's say you use the filter from before and instead of English, you accidentally picked uh, Spanish. And now you have a bunch of comments going to spam, but you have no reason why, so you're not able to really rectify the issue. I don't recommend that you check this option unless you're just trying to save yourself the space. Then there's the option to delete existing spam after X amount of days. This is useful. I believe currently the interval is thir every 30 days the spam gets cleaned out. This is useful if you want to reduce the time period. If you're active on your website, every seven days would really help keep the comment section cleaned up and to keep your database clean. I would keep it at seven days. Then you can also limit approval to comments. Other types of spam will be deleted immediately. So let's say somebody here, like let's say that somebody had uh, sent you a ping and you had their IP address flagged or whitelisted. You can limit the approval to only comments. This is not that useful of a functionality because I highly recommend that trackbacks, pingbacks, and all that nonsense is just disabled in the first place because it's so used for spam to the degree that it actually ruins whatever purpose it was trying to serve in the first place. You can delete comments by spam reason, which allows you to select multiple items based on the reason. This is not that big of a deal in my opinion, unless you're truly trying to find, the reason, uh, find a good reason. So like for instance, let's say you want to delete them by honeypot as your deleting them by multiple reasons. You can do that here. I, I don't really bother with this option too much. It's just useful for me to know the reason as to why it was deleted and then I'll go, uh, mark to spam and then I'll delete them myself. Then you can delete the anti spam B data when uninstalling. Effectively, when you uninstall the plugin, if this option is not checked, it'll leave all of its data behind in the event of you reinstalling it, it can just re-add that data. If you're going to delete a plugin and uninstall it though, what I find is you don't want it anymore, so there's no reason to hold on to the data. And so I recommend this option remains checked. And then under the more, it's more or less just uh, fluff abilities. For instance, the ability to generate statistics as a dashboard widget, that's okay. I mean, it's nothing too crazy, but I find the spam counter on the dashboard to be more useful just because it's easier and it gives you quicker information that might be more useful to you. So if you enable the option, you should see, here you go, comments blocked. It'll give you that little indication. Very simple, non-intrusive, not spammy, and just gives you what you need to know. And then we have the do not check trackbacks or pingbacks, no spam check for link notifications. You should just not have these enabled anyways, which you would do under settings and discussion, and you uncheck both of the, um, you uncheck both of these options right here. So pack back, uh, pingbacks and trackbacks should just be disabled. So there's no reason to uncheck. There's no reason to have this checked because they should be disabled anyways. And then finally, there's a comment form used outside of post. 
If you're using comment forms on something that is not a post, maybe a page or an archive or any other place on your website that is not post, you should have this option checked. That way you can go and make sure that it's validating those comments as well. And then of course, after you do it, you go ahead and hit your save button. So anti-spambi is a great replacement for Akizmet because it's free and it's really quite effective. But if you notice you're having any specific issues with it, or it's too confusing, or it's just not doing its job well enough, Akizmet really is the top of the line, but that's why it's paid. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.